Hello friends. Welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Before we get started today, let me just get this out of the way and say, would you please subscribe if you're not a subscriber? If you are, would you please like or leave me a comment? Uh, I, I really appreciate all that. Now, let's start on today's project. So, it's a week before Christmas and you had big plans to make fancy table decorations because the whole family's coming over for Christmas dinner and guess what? It hasn't gotten done. Life just got in the way. Well, I have an idea for some real quick, cute Christmas placemats that I'm gonna share with you today. What you're gonna need is two 14 inch squares of uh, a f Christmas fabric that looks like some sort of wrapping paper. And then for a ribbon, you're gonna need two strips that are four and a half inches wide. And one of them needs to be 17 inches long and one of them 19 inches long. And then you need a square of fabric that matches your ribbon that's going to be our bow and it needs to be an 18 inch square. Now I went ahead and hemmed our napkin. This is a double fold. Just fold over about a quarter inch and fold it over again and stitch all around the edge. If you need more, if you want to see me doing that and you need more instruction, you can refer to, I believe it was the Halloween placemats is the first time I did that. And I'll link it in the description below. But you, I just went ahead and sewed up our napkin for us. Now, when you have two 14 inch squares, I'm using the same fabric, but if you want to save your good fabric, you can use anything on the back because nobody's supposed to look at the back. And um, also, you don't have to use the same fabric for every placemat because we're making a package and a Christmas package. And we all know that under the tree, they're all wrapped differently. So just Take out all your scraps from Christmas fabrics and make every one of them different, just like it would look under a tree. Okay, the first thing I want to do is take both of these strips over to the sewing machine. I'm gonna fold them like this lengthwise and sew a quarter inch seam, then I'm gonna turn them right side out. Let's go do that. Okay, we've got our seam sewed. Now we need to turn them right side out. I'm going to use my fast tube turner. I'll link it in the description below. It's very handy, but it's a little pricey. I think it's around $60, so you can also turn it by hand. You poke this wire through here. And give it a little twist so it catches the top of that and then you pull this straight through and then untwist your wire and you've got it already turned
was easy. Now, I want to iron these flat. I don't know if I mentioned, but you need about a 13 and a half inch square of batting, or that's fusible fleece that I'm gonna use just because I'm trying to use some up. Now we're going to iron it with the seam going down the center back. Now we're going to put this one going across this way. Make sure if you have directional print, I don't know that mine is, that, that you're paying attention to that. And this one's going to go down the middle. I think I'll put this closer to the top. I think I like it there better. I want to get rid of this while I'm pinning it on and stitching it in place. But I'm going to use, just to make sure that it gets... Uh, that I sew it straight. I'm going to use some of my double-sided tape like I use for zippers. And just need one little piece down the middle. But this, of course, is optional. You don't have to do this. You can just pin it in place. I want to put, let's see, I'm going to put it about right there. So let me measure. Let's go down four inches. Excuse me for hitting the. The stand of, that the camera's on. Just sticking a little pin at four inches. I'm gonna do one here. Get this away from the camera stand. In the middle, so everything stays straight. Now I'm gonna pull off the paper side of this tape. Make sure it's down good first. And then I'm going to line it up all the way across. Let me take my pins out then. Now I'm going to fold it in half. and just put a teeny tiny little notch on the top and the bottom at the middle. And pull off the tape of this. And I want to have the excess of this at the top. So I'm going to just center this on my little notch. I'm going to go up to the top. And then I'm going to pull the rest of this tape off. Because I don't need that. What I'll do, so it all so my top stip stitching continues. I'm gonna leave it unstitched for now 
and stitch it all the way down, stitch all the way across this one too. But I will uh, lift this up to stitch across this one and then put this back down on top of it. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine and stitch that in place. Okay, you might have noticed when I was stitching, I was having some trouble. The uh, tape that was on these outside edges was sticking out and sticking to my machine and it didn't want to move. So I recommend pulling that tape off and cutting it before you go to the machine too. The tape you're not, you don't need. Okay, now then, We just want to turn this back. I'm going to go ahead and press it like that. And I'm going to real quickly sew that in place. Now I want to trim off any excess. I think the bottom's just fine. And now we're just gonna put it together and it will be adorable. We're going to put right sides together and we also want to put our batting in and I purposely cut my batting a half inch smaller than That looks a little better. Half inch smaller than the um, placemat, the fabric, because I wanted to um, it not to all be bulky in my seam allowance. Of course, I never get it perfect. Going this direction, it's a little bit less than quarter of an inch, but that's okay. Mine is fusible, so I'm ironing it in place here. Uh, I recommend you use uh, the 505 temporary spray. I just got some more of it to hold yours in place if you're just using batting, which batting is, is perfectly fine and what I would probably normally use. I just had this on hand that I wanted to use up. Okay, now we can put the right sides together. Make sure you're paying attention to any directional fabric. And I'm gonna just put a few pins in it. And I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. And I'm going to stitch around, leaving an opening. Let's see, where would be the best place for an opening? Um, I think I'll leave an opening over here on the side. Okay, let's go stitch this.
Let's clip our corners. It's all turned this way. I'm going to go ahead and iron the seam where we're going to stitch it closed later. side out poke out all of our corners now I'm going to use my seam ripper to, uh, but a pen would probably work better if you're afraid of cutting your seam but I'm gonna pull out the corners just a little bit more. Steam it real good. then I'm going to pin this seam. I didn't do the best job of ironing it when I had it the other way, but it still helped. Now I'm going to change my thread to black thread, take it over to the machine. I'm going to stitch all around, but I'm not going to stitch across the ribbon part. I'm going to break it there, and then I'm going to stitch right inside the ribbon on all four sides. And then it'll be done except to display it and put our napkin in. Some of you might notice that I'm back to using my grandmother's machine, Edna, uh, because my Juki that I love so much uh, started acting up and it was like the feed dogs weren't working. So I'm going to have to take that in to be looked at. And this one is so easily available in this cabinet that I use for filming, but uh, the thread breaks so often on it that I may have to get my bring my Viking Husqvarna in here to for filming too. So, okay, let's stitch. Let's give it one last good press. I thought I'd cut off all the strings, but 
they just reproduce. Okay, now then, let's take our napkin and we want to fold it in half and fold it in half again and bunch it up kind of like a bow. Shape it a little bit, and here's another string. And there's the bow on top of our Christmas package. Okay, this took less than 30 minutes to make. So, if you're in that last minute rush, pull out your scrap, Christmas fabric that you have 13, I mean 14 inch squares or, big, or bigger, yeah, and strips that are two and a half inches wide, and you too can throw together a beautiful Christmas table. All right, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope if I don't talk to you before Christmas, which I should have one more video out, but if I don't uh, talk to you before then, I want everybody to have a blessed Christmas and a happy new year. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord. Thank you.